Let me show you a time lapse that I've made of a character that is called Young Minto. This is the typical workflow process in Das Studio. So this is about like 10, 15 times the speed. We start up with loading the character and then giving her something to wear, him or her or it, depends on what you want to do. There's also a posing aspect involved. So you can either load a pose in from the library and you can tweak it later with tools. I've just used the power pose tool here for that. Then it's usually about changing the expression of the character and making him or her look into a particular direction. Depends on the look and feel you're going for. Now here I'm going and accessorizing the character. So there's the glasses, there's the hair prop, and that gives me a bit of a feel of What's, what's this going to look like? Um, now I'm setting up the camera. That's an important part that we're going to talk about because the perspective does make a difference when you're framing up portraits. And we're kind of there, final adjustments. You know, you, you adjust one thing, you've got to adjust the other thing. Now I'm setting a basic light here, also saving my scene, very important. And I'll get a feel for what does this look like right now? With the default light, I try different light sets until I kind of settle on this darker background here. And that's nice, but now I think the colors of the character don't quite match with the background. So now I'm applying different materials to the sweater that she's wearing. There's also an issue with the bump map that's a little bit too strong. So that's what I'm correcting there right now on the surfaces tab. And then there's another little render. Oh yeah, then there's also clothed cloth draping, which often results in this, which isn't so good. So uh, yes, there we go. That uh, often needs to be redone. That's the deforce simulation. We won't talk about this today. Just know that it's there, cloth draping. And then I'll try out different light settings until I'm satisfied with the thing that I've got now. I'm changing the hair color here so that we have just black and red in there. Also the little hair clip there that has a different color now. And that is pretty much it for the base character of the portrait. Now I'm thinking, hey, it'll be good if we just make that a bit more professional. I'll apply a bit of depth of field that makes this uh, hair just be a bit blurred out here on the sides. And it looks really nice now, but now that I have a dark jumper and I've got a dark background, I need another light to separate the character and the hair from the background. And that's what I'm setting up now. So this is a spotlight that I'll point at the character and that gives me that nice little catch light here. And that's the portrait that we're nearly done. All I do now is add a small vignette and some final color correction in Photoshop. And this is the final result. So even though it looks like there's a lot of steps to it, and you know, there are, it is something that when you do it often enough, you know what to look for, you know how to solve these things. 